your massive apology. Finally, finally, I'm getting around to filming the video as per your request. Why do people get hooked on orchids? They are difficult. They can be confusing. They can be stubborn, slow growing and picky. And then I've just put up some images of the examples that I have in my collection with regards to those adjectives. And lo and behold, mainly complex phalaenopsis. <laughs> I figured them out though, but I still have a few stubborn ones. Yes, of course, all of the above apply. So why are we attracted to them? And I can only speak for myself. And one of the reasons I can so relate to orchids is simply because I consider them personalities and creatures. And I used to be a people person. I am not a people person anymore. So I have evolved and changed just like orchids have evolved and changed and are then able to cope with the challenges of an environment that they might or might not be used to, or they have to adapt and evolve in order to survive the challenges of the environment that they find themselves in and there are changes. So I consider orchids like personalities and they evolve and change. And it's up to me to know and get to understand the personality of my orchids so that I can help them perform in my environment, which is probably not something that they would appreciate if they were out in nature. They you wouldn't find certain things in Southern Spain, but we're making it work. As a personality, they become my friends. And when we treat our friends right, we have a beautiful, beautiful relationship of giving and taking and giving back and taking. And it becomes a harmonious little pot of, oh, this is just amazing. You are so much fun to be around. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. But you see, I used to be a people person. Now I'm not a people person anymore. And that has nothing to do with the global cooties. Absolutely not. This has all got something to do with when my life changed back in 2016 and I just sort of lost the form of communication and I didn't want to be around people anymore. That's too much effort. And yet I have invited in a crowd of 300 plus personalities into my space that I am now responsible for and I need to take care of. And I ask myself the same question, why? The answer to that one is quite simple. Orchids are my therapy. As I'm not in the public eye anymore, even when I go out and about into the public eye, I cannot wait to get back to my patio, my space with my orchids. It's my safe space. It's where I feel comfortable. It's where I feel as though what I'm doing has a positive effect, not just on me, but also for my orchids. There is a relationship going on. These are my friends. I'm trying to get to know them better. I have to spend time with them. It's like a communication process. So to say that there is an addiction on my part, the only addiction that I have at the moment is I want more time with them. I want to be able to fuss over them more. I want to make sure there's no bugs on them. So my addiction is I need more time. I don't need more orchids. <laughs> I need more time with the ones that I have. The whole thing about orchids is that they're showing me something about themselves that I am not anymore. There used to be character traits that I used to have in the past, and I don't have those anymore. I kind of refuse to have them because they are also very stressful or they bring back really bad memories that are quite traumatic for me. So one of the characteristics that I find so appealing about orchids is their determination. They are determined to survive. And that brings me to the next point, is their willingness and need and their ability to survive against all odds, which is such a big challenge, which is another word that I attribute to orchids. Challenge, the survival, the determination. So I take these three attributes that I see in orchids and I see myself and I have lost the three attributes that used to be a big, big part of my personality. Determination, survival and challenge. I don't have determination left in me. I do not have survival left in me. A challenge gives me anxiety. If you take me outside of my patio and I have to be out and about and somebody throws me a curveball and it can be the smallest little thing, I, I'm very quickly out of breath and I'm very quickly flustered. And that never used to be the case. And the orchids are showing me the determination, the survival and the challenge that they have had to deal with in order to exist in life. 
And it's these three personality traits that I find so attractive in orchids, and they are a constant reminder. Nobody has to tell me anything. They show it. And that is where I am getting my sustenance from and trying to find those three factors back for me in my life. I hope that makes sense. And besides, they are personalities. They are creatures. You can't tell them sit. You can't tell them roll over but you can give them treats to make them happy. And when you see that that has worked and then you see them bloom or you can see a deficiency going away and then you see a new growth coming or new roots forming, there we go again. They have overcome the challenge, their willingness for survival. They are so determined to make it happen. Even if they are not given the best of care, they will still grow and bloom. Unless an orchid is taken out by absolutely no water, no humidity, no light, it is hard for an orchid to decline. We can now talk about Fusarium. Yes, big subject for me in the month of August, but okay, here we go, here we are. There's some things we cannot control, but that's the same thing for orchids. They wouldn't be able to control that in nature either. And it's those adverse effects that I also correlate with my life there are some things I cannot control. There are some things I'm just not prepared to do anything about. But it's the orchids that tell me, if I lose an orchid because of a mistake of mine, I take that personally. And in order to overcome the challenge of bringing an orchid back that was on the brink of decline, and then seeing it hopefully thrive again, that is so satisfying and I should be able to apply that in my own life and then make it happen for me as well. So I am in therapy here when I'm in my growth space not just in my blooming alley. When I'm communicating with all of you that watch my videos, I am in therapy and you are the friends of my friends. My orchids are my friends. You like my orchids. Everybody who likes my orchids is a friend of mine. End of story. When I look at the stubborn, when I look at the difficult, when I look at the picky, I look at myself and I think, which part of me is all of that? What can I do to change it? And then I try to apply that to the orchid. It's a fascinating relationship, to be honest with you, and probably not the answer that you expected. But that's why it also took me so long to make this video. I'm going to show you some examples of determination. Just want to take a quick break. I have a car on idle in the background. But let me show you an example of determination that just makes me go, yes, you can do this. And it doesn't just apply to growing orchids. It means you can do this as in life. So I've pulled out my little Rapiculus Lelia Giuliani. If you saw or if you haven't seen my Rapiculus Lelia update, I went through and showed everybody what was going on, new growths and a failed growth, right? So that was my little dew, my misting. It's the first time that's ever happened to me. Now I know I have to be a little bit more cautious. But this growth failed. You know what it did? Look at that. That's determination. That's like, oh, okay, I lost one there. Well, that's a bummer. Boom. It's grown a next one right next to each other. I, you just have to marvel at this. They are so amazing. Another example is my Epidendrum Schweinfurtianum. Just recently purchased and recently repotted. Learning about the orchid, discovering it and getting it right growing new roots. The growth it came with is extending beautifully and it's growing another new growth. If I can turn it around without knocking everything over and boring you. And then there's another new growth. Against all odds, survival. This is, this is happening before our eyes when it comes to orchids that, you know, they've been taken out from wherever environment they've been in and then they come into our climate and then we try to make it happen and try to make them happy. And when we get it right, this is survival and this is what I also see every single day. And I try to think back to when I was like that. You can rip me out of my comfort zone, you can put me somewhere else and I made it happen. That's gone now. That is totally gone and these orchids are a visual reminder of who I used to be and I'm trying to get back to that. 
So let's talk about picky and stubborn. I mean, the complex files we know about, but here are my named Neo-Phoenicia falcata. Well, I am picky. I am not putting them in the setup that they would prefer, that everything would actually work out fine with the moss. So I'm picky with regards to how I want to grow them, and I am stubborn too. So it's gonna be like, who's gonna come through? I would like all of us to come out on top. I would like my stubbornness to work so that I can keep them without having to moss them. But you see, these are character traits that I have in me. And the orchids make me aware of that. And then I start analyzing myself just as I analyze my orchids. Then there's another added characteristic that had come into my life. And this is new for me. I've never been this way. And that is complacency. Since 2016, it's almost like just forget it. I threw everything into the wind. Every effort I had made in my past life it just stopped. It felt like it wasn't worth it. Why did I bother? And I became very complacent. And orchids, no. There is no room for complacency when you have orchids. It's get up, go time, fertilize time, make it happen time, don't let them dry out time, flushing time, potting up time, cleaning up time, and literally making sure that they are okay. There's no room for complacency, and this character trait of mine is very, very strong within me at the moment. And my orchids are the ones where that quality cannot apply. It cannot manifest itself. If the rest of my life I just put into a shredder and forget about it, it is my orchids that bring me back to reality because complacency has no place within the orchid hobby. And then after you keep trying and trying, getting it right, brings you a second bloom of a zygopetalum. <laughs> I didn't want this video to be so heavy. Honestly, I didn't. I was thinking, how far do I go? I don't want to turn anybody off. But if there's one thing I have not lost since 2016 is my honesty. And in all honesty, challenge, determination, survival, personality and the creatures that I have around me. They are my friends. That is why I am so into orchids. Besides the fact they remind me of my roots back in Kenya, which is a very, very big comfort if I can erase and not think about the 30 years in between. Darcy, I hope that you found an answer in this video. I hope that it was informative, <laughs> maybe a bit entertaining, maybe a bit heavy. I do profoundly apologize if this is not what you expected. I look forward to hearing what you have to say and anybody else that might have watched or listened to this video. Thank you very, very much for your time. The comment section is open for all your opinions. What is it about you and your orchid hobby? And why are you so committed to this hobby? Appreciate your question, Darcy. It was a tough one. I admit, but here it is. Here you have my answer. Thank you so, so much, Darcy, for your support on my channel. Thank you, everybody else who has watched this video as well. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.